Last year, self-producing Filipino-German singer Imelda Schweithot posted on Facebook a xenophobic remark toward K-pop and Koreans. She argued that Filipinos are losing their identity trying to be like Koreans and suggested to have our own identity as culture and nation than losing ourselves into trends. Schweithot is only one of the thousands of Filipinos who are still suspicious of the influence of K-pop toward the question of Filipino identity. In my latest journal article, published at Seoul National University's Asia Review, I talk about Korean pop music, particularly that of idol culture, in relation to questions about our national identity as Filipinos in this age of globalization. My encounter with Korean pop culture was way back in 2008, during my junior year in high school. It was also in those years that K-pop was attempting to penetrate the Southeast Asian market. Probably you ask the question, is listening to Korean pop music make us less Filipino? Does it make us ungrateful to our own culture? Is this sort of obsessive fandom culture to K-pop is threatening our own culture? In my paper, I provide explanations and interrogations on such matters. I trace back the history of K-pop in the Philippines, the effects of colonization on the development of our identity as Filipinos, and how vulnerable present-day Filipino culture is. Likewise, I dissected K-pop culture itself and its beginnings, from the cultural dominance of the West to K-pop being a global phenomenon, how Koreans turned this influence over to their advantage. In my study, I also included the emerging popularity of Philippine pop music that copies the K-pop formula of idol culture, from the variety of business models, audiovisual trends, to commercial appeal. There's an interesting video on this by a former K-pop idol who live in the Philippines, Jessica E. In her video, she talks about cultural imperialism in the Philippines and settles the controversy and issue behind that P-pop is copying K-pop. I'll put the link to her YouTube video in the description below. In my paper, I argued on the same lines that while K-pop could be perceived by other nations as threatening to their local culture and markets, in the Philippines we have seen that it was used culturally and economically to revive a stagnant or decaying P-pop. When I say decaying, I'm referring to mainstream Filipino pop music, which has been musically stagnant since the early 2000s except for those talented independent artists who have potential yet lack exposure and doesn't bother getting institutionalized or put under a label. Throughout history, Filipino cultural identity has always been adaptable, vibrant, and inclusive. This is how the Filipino culture survived the hundred years of colonization, especially considering the pressure from something foreign knocking at our borders in this age of globalization. This is in contrast to the arguments that insist that the rising popularity of P-pop or K-pop in the Philippines poses challenges to our culture and identity, and to those who claim that the exercise of soft power can be counterproductive. Contemplating on the success of K-pop globally, I argued that this is the same goal of P-pop as an emerging and revival cultural phenomenon in the Philippines. Because in the first place, What's the difference between Filipinos listening to K-pop or getting crazy over idols and Filipinos enjoying OPM artists singing songs in English that have similar style with Western artists? Thank you very much.